All right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman. It is always with me, uh, is uh, blah, 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 Mr. Jake Peters. We are PS. This is awesome. PlayStation Podcast this is episode 213. This is a show where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation. But before we get on with the show, I want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash PS. This is awesome. Visit us on Twitter at PS. This is awesome. And if you want to make fun of our trophy list on the PlayStation Network, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw one as always, you can write the show at PS is awesome at gmail.com. Most importantly, don't forget to share the show with your friends. Be sure to leave comments, rate the podcast as you see fit. And as a reminder, this is a video podcast as well, so you can watch the show if you prefer over at our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to that. And for new and or long-time listeners, we now have a Patreon. You can support the show at a $1 level called the one and only $1 Club. Head over to www.patreon.com slash PS This Is Awesome to become a $1 patron and get your free die-cut vinyl sticker and a shout-out on our show. So, with that out of the way, Jake, how are you doing this lovely Friday evening? It offends me that websites, when you go to purchase something, display items that are not in stock. I feel like it should just not show them if it doesn't have them to purchase. Yeah, but they want you to come back and look for it again later. Yeah, but most of the time, they have no indication of when it's going to be back in stock. It would be one thing if it was like, hey, we're not in stock, but check back in fucking three weeks or something like that. Like some websites do do that and that's fine. It's like, okay, we're expecting a shipment in, you know, a few days or whatever. You just said do do, but some of them are just like out of stock. And then it's like, okay, well then are you getting more? Are you just on selling this? What the fuck? Like, should I look somewhere else? What's going on? What the hell is this situation, right? What's going on? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're having uh, commerce issues over there with your shopping, digital shopping trip. But uh, yeah, man, cool. Happy to hear that you're uh, surviving on a Friday and we're doing the podcast on time. Maybe actually a little early, some might say. But it feels Mm. right. It feels right to do it today. I've got a couple things I want to talk about before we get on with the show. A couple interesting things, strange things, troublesome things, but altogether, uh, I would say, worthy of discussion. If there are any vehicle owners out there You know that, uh, maybe you don't, but Pennsylvania has a very strict inspection. Every year, you got to take your car, right? You got to take your car, get it inspected. My 2009 Toyota Yaris, which is what I drive, because I had a job where I had to commute a lot, and I got this small car car that looks like a roller skate. I've had it forever. It's paid up and paid off for years, driving this, this thing into the dirt. So, I take good care of it, don't get me wrong, but... It is missing two hubcaps, and uh, it's seen better days. Its inspection is March, right? So I got to get this thing inspected by the end of the month. So I call. I call. I still get my inspections done at the dealership. I just know that I trust them way more. And, of course, it's going to cost way more to have the car serviced if it needs help. But uh, they're going to let you know when shit's not right, right? There's not some dude operating at a garage who wants to throw you a bone. Be like, ah, it's not that bad. You know, I want to know when shit's fucked up with my car. And then let me decide whether or not I want to take it to like someone who might help me out, cut me a deals later. But I'm going to take it to, to Toyota, right? So I take my car to Toyota, knowing that the brakes sounded a little funky, the rotors sounded like it could be grinding a little bit, there's some rust around the gas cap. It's, uh, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there, but we're not quite there yet where I need to get a new car. And I take it in and I leave it. And uh, I did the early bird drop off. So I leave the car late at night and uh, I'm at work the next day. I take the wife's car to work and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I start my shift at 7.15. So like it's like 9.30 and then I get a call. And I'm like, whoo, all right, we got through that one. And, and he goes, hey, just want to let you know you're due for an oil change and a tire rotation. Do you want us to tack that onto the inspection? I said, yeah, that's fine. Fucking whatever, do it. He says, all right, cool. I go, have you you put it up yet? Have you looked at it yet? And he goes, no, we haven't done anything with it yet. And I'm like, okay. So now I'm still just waiting and waiting. And, and, you know, I'm waiting because I'm nervous, not so much that my car is going to fail inspection, but I'm more so nervous about what the bill is going to be, right, to keep this thing on the road. I could care less, really, if it has problems. I just want to know what the damage is. So lunch comes and goes. I haven't heard anything. One o'clock comes and goes. Two o'clock comes and goes. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, What's going on here? 
Then I get a call. I take the call and he says, hey, uh, there are some issues, but the issues we're seeing, we can't, like they wanted to fail. Like we can't fail it for these issues, but we are going to have to fail inspection because you have a teeny chip in your windshield and you have to have your windshield replaced. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So, like, I knew... Let me let me backtrack a little bit. So, the issues that they saw was, like, rust, right? Obviously, we're in northwest Pennsylvania. The salt will eat the shit out of your car. I don't do the undercoating like I should. Never did it. Got some rust issues. No holes, though. He said, like, the the, the slip calipers are for the brakes and stuff, they're, they're a little little sticky but they're working fine you know something to worry about next year tires are old they're, the tread's fine but the tires are old a little bit of dry rod setting in they'll pass it but the big issue was this little chip in the windshield right and in 2015 jake i was on the highway and i'm driving and you go bam you know and there was a huge chip on my windshield and it's kind of in your line of sight but it's not so big that you can't move like you can't see you know what i mean it's not like a baseball hit it it's not like someone took a bat to it it's just a little nick out of the windshield i called my insurance company in 2015 they had safe safe auto or auto glass someone came came to my place of employment they filled it you couldn't even tell it was there it was good for a couple years and then it resurfaced recently and it shows back up. And I'm, I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, what? Maybe the integrity of the windshield is a little dangerous, right? But it's not such, it's not like a chip that, like, you can't even see it, honestly. It looks like bug guts. You can't even really see the fucking thing. So then I go to pick up my car and I'm like, hey, so can they just refill it? Like, or are you guys saying that you won't pass it unless I get a brand new windshield? And he said, if they refill it, we. We cannot, we know where it's at. If we look there and we see any remnants of it, we are going to fail it. And I'm like, he said, because it's in your line of view. And I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, this is some fucking horse shit. So I call my insurance company and uh, the lady on the phone was super nice. I told her about the situation in 2015. And then she's like, oh yeah, I found your claim here. She goes, it's comprehensive. So the deductible was only a hundred bucks. And uh, it's not going to affect your insurance payment. And you need to call Erie Glass. And I'm like, okay. So I call Erie Glass. I'm like, you guys came out and fixed this in 2015. Can you just refill this? And the girl's like, we don't refill a previous fill. You need a new windshield. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, let's fucking do it then. So then I, uh, I said, let's do it. So if it was just a fill, I wouldn't have had to pay anything. But a replacement of a windshield is $100 for me, which is still pretty fucking cheap considering and it's not going to fuck up my insurance but the fact of the matter is it's costing me more because i was just going to have them come out to my place of employment and just do it while i'm at work because that's what they did last time but because it's a replacement they want to have access to a garage to do it and i'm like okay well i have a single car garage but it's like not very big and they're like oh that's okay we don't need a lot of space we just need to make sure that like if the weather is temperament or if it's not good that they have a place the technician has a place to work on it and i'm like okay so i guess i now i have to take off some time from work so now it's costing me vacation time i'm just kind of annoyed by this whole thing do you have anything to say um boo hoo i guess come on it's just <laughs> Nick, like seriously going to fail inspection it's- for that do, uh, yeah, it, it is stu- It is stupid that they would fail it for Come on. for that. Yeah, but I mean, dude, I I just got the suburban inspected, and my bill was twenty nine hundred dollars. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to fucking hear that about your little sucks. Chip. Yeah, you might as well yeah, just I bought mean, another car, like a used car. I, you couldn't. You couldn't even begin to replace that suburban for what I have in it. Yeah. So fair it's, enough. It's still worth it to pay that, but it's because especially because I plan on having it for a long time. Fucking hey, dude. But it's yeah, it's it sucks. Pennsylvania requires inspection. I I actually prefer living in a state that requires inspection. I just wish that it wasn't sure. so strict. Like it should be limited to things like, oh, like is your car falling apart? Mm-hmm. Oh, are your brakes failing? Is your exhaust oh, are your dragging? tires going to explode? Yeah. yeah, like it shouldn't be like 
oh, you know, you've got a chip in like, your like, windshield, or like even if you even if you have like a little bit of rust on like a body panel that doesn't do anything, mm-hmm. like like that type of stuff is to me, it just seems kind of silly. Even like a chip in your windshield, the fact that it's if it's as tiny as you say that oh, it dude, is, you can't even fucking see it. You have to like squint to see this thing. That's what you get for going to a fucking dealership for all your work, man. Yeah, fair enough. They though. fucking they they write you up for every little teeny they weeny thing. I'm surprised but, they didn't tell you you need windshield wipers too. Well, they did, but that comes free with the wind. <laughs> that comes free with the windshield repair for with my insurance. I had to click a button. I was like, yeah, I want uh, the free window wipers. That's like a fucking meme. Is it, it is like a meme. You take your car to a dealership. They always tell you you need new. Windshield yeah, or wipers. like a bulb is out or something, you know, and they charge you yeah. fucking seventy five dollars to replace a fucking light bulb. Anyway, so I had that go on. And then we are going to talk about games here shortly. But uh, as you guys all know, I finished painting my Hero Quest game system. But what I did do is, and this might be up your alley too, Jacob. I, we got to get you back on one of these board games. Um, something mm. a little more fun. Hero Quest is simple, right? You're not, we're not going to have any big table discussions about the fucking rules of Hero Quest. But this is a game that's a little more advanced. Warhammer put it out. It's called Cursed City. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks awesome. So I picked it up. It's uh, It was a, a one-shot. So they released it just one time, and I missed it. And uh, they announced that they were re-releasing it, and they're going to support it with expansions and stuff. Now, this game was not fucking cheap, but it's the, it'll be my first introduction to any, any game backed by Warhammer or uh, distributed by Warhammer games. And I'm actually really excited because I've gotten pretty competent at painting miniatures, and uh, the gameplay is awesome. Essentially, the it's like a dungeon trawl, crawler, but like it's a city. And essentially, you're just like eight. You could pick uh, one of eight different heroes. And you're supposed to have a party of four, much like Hero Quest. The rules are a little more, you know, a uh, little. I don't want to say complicated, but a, a little more um, thought out. Some of the dice rolls and stuff. But essentially, there's a there's a werewolf character who took over the city. And your character carries over from game from uh, uh, they're, they're called journey to journey. And as a group, you collectively decide what you want to do, and you build up your levels for your characters. And um, so apparently, the story because it's Warhammer, it's fucking weird. It's not actually medieval, but it feels like a medieval setting because there's a vampire and there's like zombies and skeletons and shit and the undead. So there's a tracker that keeps track of the day and night cycle while you're on the game board for the for the journey. And uh, each journey is like essentially a quest. And uh, you as a group get to collectively decide what type of quest you want to run. And as your characters level up, when you get to a certain level, then you can choose to do a decapitation run, which is trying to take out one of the mini bosses. So it seems really rad. And uh, so some of the other other runs is like there's a deliverance run, which is a, a random city generator where you roll dice and it tells you what what game board pieces to put down. And it's decided that way and what enemies are, are based on card flips, shuffle card. And then the goal is essentially to to deliverance. I believe the goal is to like save somebody, right? Save c- c- citizens or civilians. And then the other one, the main one is just like a regular journey, journey, a hunt journey or something where your goal is to like eliminate X amount of enemies and level your fucking characters up and get back and like spend points to, to get new gear and stuff. So the goal is, is eventually after you kill enough mini bosses, um, and the mini boss, the de- the decapitation, uh, levels actually have like, uh, they're actually set up less random, which is cool. So, like, by the time you get to the final mission, it's it's all splayed out, and there's lots of flavor text, and there's lots of shit, and, like, you're trying to take out this this vampire werewolf guy um, and save the city. So, it seems really cool. It's called Cursed City, and uh, it looks awesome. Anyways, I bought it. I have it. I'm going to start painting it, so maybe we can play it sometime this year. It looks really cool, and it's and it's and there's no there's no dungeon master, so it's completely co op, which is cool. That's neat. Yeah, so cool. So, anyways, for anyone who's interested in board games at all, I haven't played any of it yet, but uh, I've been reading up on it and the lore and stuff of this of this game, and it's cool shit. It's a Warhammer Quest game. Anyways, Jake, I'm still digging into Horizon Forbidden West. Haven't made much more progress. Let's not even talk about Horizon this show because we've been doing it every episode, and I feel like our listeners we're losing listeners because our shows are very similar at the beginning. So let's not even discuss Horizon. 
and we'll save it for the Horizon podcast we're going to do when we both beat the game. I haven't made much more progress. I've got like 23 hours in, though. So it's just ridiculous. And I've only seen one tall neck so far. Have you been playing anything else? Uh, Yeah, I've been playing a lot of a game. Oh, I'm going to fucking butcher the name. Um, It's like this really Japanese name. It's called... I think it's called... Naruto Boy. No, 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 no. It's called like... It's like this really long name. It's called... It's called... Record of Lotus War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. Jesus. Why is it called it's that? The, it's the dumbest fucking name on the planet. Just like three quarters of all double A Japanese games that come out. However, yeah. this game is fucking awesome. Yeah. It's it's like so I I had heard about it and I had heard that like, you know, just kind of in passing, oh this this looks pretty cool. People actually like these Record of Lotus War games or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was just kind of looking for um, something to play on my Xbox because I was out of town for work and I refuse to take my PS5 with me when I travel. Yeah. So because I don't want to I don't want to break it. But my Series S is tiny and it fits in like a shoebox. So I just like throw it in my suitcase and I've got Game Pass and. So this game is available on PlayStation as well. It's not just an Xbox game, Mm -hmm. but it's like, imagine, let me see if I can, uh, Record of Lodos War, yeah, Record of Lodos War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth is the name of this fucking game. Um, But it's like, imagine, imagine like a, a light version of Symphony of the Night. Mm-hmm. But mix it with like the 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 dual um like the like the dual like the like the, like the duality element of like uh, you remember that game Outlander where you where you would like switch between like fucking yellow and blue or whatever oh yeah yeah I do like remember that puzzles and stuff so like uh, imagine imagine a, a Metroidvania game. That is very similar sort of in in kind of like theme in terms of it's like sort of like a gothic fantasy theme, mm-hmm. sort of like a very neat, like almost hand drawn, but still pixelated kind of graphics. And it's like very hack and slashy, but you have like magic and you also have like a like a bow and stuff. But then you also have these the spirit that like follows you around and you you ha- you have two of them you have a fire spirit and a wind spirit and if you have the fire spirit activated certain enemies don't do damage to you or you actually you actually uh recover your magic points if you have that spirit activated and they attack you with like a fire attack and you've got the fire spirit activated yeah or if you've got the wind spirit activated and they attack you with a wind attack then you can you you gain magic points that way and then uh or you can you can regain them and then some enemies require you to be a specific type uh you have one of the specific things activated in order to do that which is very common for like those types of games where you have to like switch between elements or whatever. I mean, it's not like a new thing, but it's very like you just use the, uh, the R one trigger to go back and forth. And it's very like fast paced. You're like switching back and forth between them when you're fighting certain enemies. And what's the other thing that's kind of neat about it is that you can level up the, those little, those little, uh, spirits you can level them up to level three and as you level them up you do more damage while that spirit is active so like whenever if you get hit while you're let's say if you have the wind spirit and you get hit then you're down to level one but if you are attacking enemies and doing damage and stuff and you don't get hit you can level up to level three and while you're at level three with a spirit it constantly gives you your health back So there's like this element of not only you want to level a spirit up because it does more damage, but you also want to have the spirit at the top level because if you're 
fighting then and you have like damage dealt to you or whatever you have low health it'll actually heal you while it's at level three but sometimes there's like a little game involved where you know both spirits individually have their own level so if let's say you're fighting and the enemies that you're fighting are sort of agnostic Mm. to what damage type they take and it's kind of difficult you can switch to one spirit and so that like if you get hit or whatever your that spirit gets knocked down to one or whatever and then like you can kind of back off a little bit switch to the other one that's level three and it'll start healing you back up and then you can jump back into the fray switch to the other one in case you take damage like there's a lot of like really neat little like nuances to the gameplay like that that sort of add depth to the gameplay so it's more Sounds than good. just like a hack and slashy kind of thing um it's really neat i i think like i fred if you ever if you ever come across like i feel like you know i don't know if i would pay full price i don't even honestly know what full price for this game is but if you ever come across it and it's on sale or something and it's reasonable like you know 15 or 20 bucks i'd pick it up it's really really fun now granted i'm i'm only a little i i only started playing it basically what day would that have been monday monday night i started playing it in the hotel and so i played it like monday tuesday wednesday while i was in thursday morning while i was out of town i was just playing it in the hotel because work trips are you know i I don't really want to go out and do much of anything i'll go get go get a drink and maybe have some dinner or whatever but then usually i just want to chill in my hotel room so it's cool to have something to play and not just have to sit and watch fucking garbage cable or something uh so i was pleased and i actually started what i started playing before this was um have you heard of that game infernax i have heard of that i don't i don't know it's, why but i have heard of it so, so it's a new game it might have even been published by yacht club but uh it's uh let me see here so it was published by dotemu or dot emu or however you want to pronounce it um but basically, if you look it up, it's like heavily inspired by Castlevania, like oh, super. It's like that's what yeah. that one so is. So it's yeah. like, yeah. So it's like super slow. Imagine like, you know, you know how a game like uh, for the listeners, you know, how a game like Shovel Knight is heavily inspired by things like like uh, Mega Man and or like um, Cyber Shadow is inspired by Ninja Gaiden, like heavily inspired. This is like that but for castlevania that's cool it's very it's very very neat but like i started playing it for a little bit and uh it was kind of challenge like it was really challenging me so i just like i was like you know what i'm gonna put this on hold um i really wasn't like feeling at the moment it like it seems great but i just wasn't really i felt like i had to think too much when i was playing it i know Mm. that sounds silly but so like I switched over to this other game and I do want to go back to Infernax. It like it is really cool. But I switched over to um I don't even fucking know what to call that other game. It's, the name is too long. But uh yeah, it, it the record of Lotus War, Deedlit and Wonder Labyrinth Labyrinth. I'm like I don't know, maybe like I would say maybe six or so hours into it, and I do really enjoy it. So I I thought it was kinda Plus, I thought it would be cool to have something to talk about on the podcast other than Horizon. So yeah, thank you. I wanted to jump into something that like that's one thing that, you know, I this is a PlayStation podcast and I 100 percent um, am a PlayStation fan. But the one cool thing and hopefully we get this with the new PlayStation, whatever it is, Project Scorpio or what's Spartacus. the called? Spartacus. Scorpio. Um, that was the that was the code name for the Xbox uh, One X. Love anyway, it. so the one cool thing about Game Pass with Xbox is that like I never would have bought this game. I never would have bought it. I never would have tried it. Mm. I would have just been like, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm not gonna buy this because like one, like the name is super stupid. Like I'm just not even gonna look at it nine times out of ten. But it just so happened is like I I'd heard the name before, and it was on Game Pass. So I was like, whatever, I'll just watch the trailer. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, holy fuck, this actually looks really dope. Yeah. And then I downloaded it and I was like, wow, this is 
actually really fun. So I'm in, in, in Infernax is another game that's on there that Infernax is a game that I'd be more willing to buy. Cause it's like straight up, you know, it's like a, a cyber shadow or like I mentioned, like a, um, uh, shovel knight where it's like oh this game looks fucking dope like i would love i would be willing to buy something like this but this other game i would never fucking buy it right if i didn't have wasn't able to just kind of download it and try it so yeah, yeah it, it's a game that i would that i would recommend if you're into something like um symphony of the night we're doing the metroidvania thing backtracking getting new equipment to go to old places that you weren't able to get to before you know a more recent uh more recent version of this would be something like axiom verge uh so yeah i don't know i don't know what else to say it's cool you still plan on playing axiom verge too Mm. yeah sorry i took a drink um i do want to play axiom verge too i keep forgetting that it actually came out on playstation yeah that's the thing. Is it like they didn't advertise it at all on PlayStation? Yeah, it wasn't which is weird much. because because Axiom Verge One was like fucking everywhere whenever it launched launched on PlayStation. I agree. Yeah, I remember seeing it all over the place. But I don't know why. That's like w- whenever I said like it's not on PlayStation. And you're like, yeah, it is. And like we looked it up, and it's like, sure, shit, it's on fucking PlayStation. I'm like, <laughs> why? I should know this. Yeah, it's weird. Like, why did I not know this? Yeah. And we host a PlayStation but podcast. I would like to play Axiom Verge, but when it comes, if I'm on my PS5, I'm playing Horizon. I just, I got to get, get through, through that it. game. I'm not sick of it really yet. Like it. Yeah, I, I, I will say that I'm not sick of Horizon yet. I just haven't put a lot of effort and time into it. I've, had, I've been kind of busy. Projects around the house. We're going to renovate our bathroom here soon. We're getting pieces for that. And then I just really into this fucking board game shit right now i it, the bug will come and go i'm sure it will but right now it's just i'm really into that i wrote i wrote like a majority of a new song today it sounds really cool too so i'm excited about that just i didn't plan to do it it just kind of happened so i'm happy with it um let's get into the news jake a lot of playstation news we're coming off of a state of play we'll get to that eventually we're going to talk about that we got to revisit this epic games by Bandcamp thing we we put a pin in on the last show um but let's start off with what was like i started doing the the notes for the podcast earlier this week and one of the through lines on a lot of the places where we get our news push square and these different sites um you know uh playstation blog and i don't even know where else i look i just kind of find shit but um twitter people people posting shit on twitter but god of war welcome to the ps this is awesome patreon page for those of you that don't know my name is fred oakman and i'm jake peters and we're a playstation podcast currently in our 10th year our first episode aired in july of 2012 where we discussed and speculated on the arrival of the ps4 Over the years, we've used this podcast to take a break from adulting, share our love of video games, and in particular, PlayStation. The audio podcast is available on all major streaming services, and we have recently made the leap to uploading video content and video podcasting to our YouTube channel, as well as the very occasional Twitter post or live stream. Over the years, we have covered everything from PS3 to PS Vita through the launches of PS4, PSVR, and now PS5. As our audience has grown over the years, we have decided to start this Patreon with the hopes of creating a medium in which we can give you the opportunity to help support our show. And as a test bed, we're starting with a single tier. It's called the one and only $1 Club. So with your support at the $1 level, we're going to mail you a premium vinyl cut sticker and give you a shout out on the podcast. But at this time, unfortunately, we can only ship to the U.S. and Canada. But this is subject to change depending on your interest. So whether you're new to the show or you're a frequent flyer, we are forever thankful for your support and hope you can find it in your little gaming heart to join us in the one and only $1 Club. Until next time, like PlayStation, Podcasting, and Patreon, P.S. This this is awesome. Apparently is being considered for a TV series 
through Amazon Prime Video. And I'm just thinking, who the fuck are they going to get to play Kratos was my first thought. I'm like, who are they going to get to do that? Batista? Like, isn't he the dude from Guardians of the Galaxy? Like, like who fits? But, I mean, the voice actor for Kratos is a is a pretty big fucking dude. He could probably do it. I don't know if I don't know, maybe he's because an actor. He's, maybe because he's black and he's older. Let's do it. The guy that the guy that voices Kratos. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they can't do that, but if they were like, oh, we're gonna try and make it look Give him like a beard. fucking Kratos. Yeah. Then who do you get? He looks well. The, the guy that voices him. Let's rephrase that a little bit. He looks more like uh, a big guy in the way that like a WWE wrestler looks like a big guy. Not really ripped or in super shape, but he's just a big fucking dude, right? Someone you wouldn't want to like mess with. But, like, doesn't look cut like Kratos is fucking cut. Like, Kratos is big and cut. Like, who has that build? Who could have that build and sell being Kratos? What actor? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's something, I mean, you would almost need somebody, like, somebody that's, like, like The Rock or something like that. Yeah, you The know? Rock would be or good for like, it. He really like would. Like, just... Somebody of that no, but you know Batista. You brought up Dave Batista. He's fucking huge. He's not cut though. So so like it, you know there is there are guys like that that you know you could get, but I just I mean Batista might if he had like a big beard, I don't know. He's a little. Um, it might be difficult just because of his. He's a little round. He's he's very he's round and he's very his, he's very Hispanic too so like but I don't know just in like his features like I know he's American but like it's um I don't know like it's strange I'm not saying that you know that couldn't that couldn't work but I'm looking at pictures of Batista right now Dave, Dave Batista is who we're talking about he plays uh, what's that dude's name in Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I would not know. I haven't seen it. God, dude, you could... What about, like, Jason Momoa? I mean, he might work. Yeah, dude, I'm looking at pictures of Batista. I don't know if these are older pictures or not, but he could definitely do Kratos, dude. So, I'm just... If they gave him, if they gave him a huge beard... Yeah, dude. He could fucking... painted, like, that fucking stripe on his head. He yeah, has, like, dope. tribal tattoos on his arms already. He'd be perfect. He's got, like... He has fucking God of War tattoos on him already. Look at him. The Google, Google image... Just Batista and look at this fucking dude. Look at the fucking pictures. Give him a fucking beard. It's Kratos. I'm saying Batista's Kratos if they do this. He's an actor. Pe- that is true. People love him. Dude. Also true. 100%. All right. Let, let's, let's just end that topic right now because I think there's no better choice than Batista at this point. After. Man, he does have a super round head though. Well, so does Kratos, though. Give him a pointy beard, and it'll kind of even it out. That is true. I, th- I think he'd be a good pick. Anyways, you heard it here first. Batista's going to be Kratos in the God of War series on Amazon Prime. All right. Anyways, uh, <laughs> leak that shit, everybody. Speaking of leaks, it was leaked, but now you can actually do it. Grand Theft Auto V single player is going to be retail on next gen for 10 bucks. And uh, the online's free. It's coming out the 14th. Wait, what's that? Grand Theft Auto V, the entire single-player yeah. game on Next Gen is going to be $10. Oh, uh, that's not too bad. No, that's actually really awesome. And then the single-player is free for us. So I might actually buy it for 10 bucks. I never got to, I never got to fuck with the sing, like the first-person view because that was like that was Next Gen PS4, I think. Yeah. And I only ever had it on PS3. And uh, you got it for free on PS4 at some point. Not the single player, I don't think. I think so. I think we got the whole game on PS Plus. I don't remember point. that. <laughs> Anyways, ten bucks. Jake, are you interested in doing? I know you had trouble. We never completed the single player. That's what we like about the Grand Theft Auto games. Do you think you would buy it for ten bucks? Next gen version. Uh, three. Yeah, I'd consider it. I, I'd be loads. interested in actually playing back through the game again. I never got to. Uh, finish the campaign so and I, I i've always enjoyed playing the grand theft auto games they're just a fun sandbox yeah dude you know i i just i mean even grand theft auto 5 i used to literally just get in a car and just drive it as fast as possible and jump it off of shit yeah dude 
And like that, you know, and, and that was just always fun to do. I was never like the kind of guy that would just walk around like mowing down civilians, mm. but I, I always enjoyed like the shenanigans with the vehicles and you try and steal someone's car and they like steal it back from you. And like, just like weird shit that always happened mm-hmm. in the single player. The soundtrack's I pretty mean, good too. So the soundtrack is awesome. I, I love the sarc, the sarcasm and the game and everything. And, I I played a little bit of the online when they first released it, yeah. but I just I can't I can't do it. I talked to a couple people that are still really into it, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I, I I really quit playing it after the first month or so that it came out because it was just freaking bedlam. Like you would just be walking <laughs> around and people just run you over for no reason. Yeah. Like you, you're not able to just go about your business. You can't even try to do what you want to do. And, and I asked and, and I was like, is it still like that? They're like, yeah, it's still like that. I'm just like, no, then no, I, I, I want no part in it. Like I want there to be a focused experience where I can like accomplish goals and stuff, not have to worry about the purge and like fucking just people trying to murder me for no reason. Like it, it's yeah. I, like, if people are into it, that's awesome. Like clearly it's successful. It's just not for me. I want co-op single player GTA. Like like linear GTA co op. Well, it seems like the multiplayer does have a lot of story content, and you might be able to like, I don't know anything about how this works, but maybe when you're doing the story missions, right? They they take you out of the out of the like the free for all. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like Destiny when you get to like the mission level, the area. It's like they just you're pull no you out of that server or whatever. World, yeah, you know. So maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I might pick that up for ten bucks, man. I like that price point. I'm surprised Rockstar didn't make it twenty. I mean, they could have made so much more money just by next gen GTA five. Here you go. But I think they know they're making most of the money on the online. And I think right now if you're a plus member, they're giving away like a million dollars or something. Grand Theft Auto money, obviously, to spend online. So Sure. So put it in your uh in your account and get it. And then uh if you ever want to jump into online, you'll have that waiting for you. You can buy like a cool car or a helicopter or a grenade launcher or something. Anyways, Forspoken, the first party. I don't know if it's first party, but it is uh it is a PlayStation exclusive, I believe. Um it's been delayed from May out to October of this year. Luminous Productions, a developer, indicate on a tweet or a post, they said we have made the decision to move the release date for of Forspoken to October 11th, 2022. Our vision for this exciting new IP is to deliver a game world and hero that gamers across the globe will want to experience for years to come. So getting it right is extremely important to us. To that end, during the next few months, we'll focus all of our efforts on polishing the game and can't wait for you to experience Frey's journey this fall. Thank you for understanding and continued support. We look forward to sharing more about Forspoken with you soon. Luminous Productions. Not really a surprise, but I mean like May to October, how many months is that? Four? That's uh, five months. You can't probably do too much to a game in five months, That especially when it's this far along the way. I mean, it probably is just strictly polishing. Be my guess. I'll be honest. I mean, I know a lot of people have sort of poo pooed this game a little bit, but I think it looks cool yeah. personally. And I hope that they, I would really like, because Square Enix has had some fucking duds recently. So I'm really hoping that they nail this because the combat and the motion in the game looks super fucking cool. It does. So I, I would really, in, in the protagonist, um, you know, it's not very often. Actually, I can't even think of a time ever where I've played as a a black girl as a protagonist in a video game. So that's yeah. cool. Like, I think the only time I, I have is Clementine. What? Clementine from Walking Dead. Clementine's not black, dude. You sure? What the fuck's wrong with you? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. I thought she was. No, Lee Everett's black. I thought they both were. <laughs> no. Are you certain? I am certain. I'm not certain about this. You're breaking my brain okay. right now. Are you sure? What do you mean I'm breaking your brain? Fucking Dude. Google All it. All right, I'm fucking good. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do have a few drinks in me, but I thought she was black. <laughs> no. Clementine. I knew Lee was. I thought they both were. Yeah. No. Hold on. Let's look at this. Mm. I don't think they ever talk about her ethnicity. I always kind of picked if up. Anything, I picked up a little bit on anything, her being black. Huh? If anything, maybe you could say she has a bit of a Hispanic slant to her, but she is definitely not black. <laughs> oh, first question. All right, you're right. First question. <laughs> you know, like you look up on Google, the very first fucking question people also ask. All I typed in was Clementine Walking Dead. Very first thing that Google shows, what race is Clementine in The Walking Dead? I'm not the only one maybe that didn't know. It says Clem's race. Clementine's mother is Asian while her father is black. This makes her Blasian is what it says. I've never heard of that. So, huh. got it. What did, what were you saying before? You said his, Hispanic? I, I, I just said that she had, she had, it seemed like she just visually so, maybe had a Hispanic slant to her, but, but Asian and black, I guess kind of makes sense. So I'm not wrong. So you did, you do have a little bit, you do have a little but bit of I ground give, to stand on. I will give, you're 50% right. I will give anybody a pass on this because the art style of this game is different and it's very, the, the, just the way that it is, it's kind of difficult to really, to really un- to see that I think. But anyways, hey, called it. Yeah, taking hmm. credit for that one, Jakey. All right. Fuck me. That's that's a reversed that's a reversed burst bubble. <laughs> We're doing all kinds of new shit on the show today. Anyways, uh, what were we talking about? We we're talking about uh, for spoken, and you mentioned being a black female character, and I said, yeah, I think Clementine's the only other time. I, I can't think of any others though. Mm. Honestly, black female. Unless like you do like a custom character creator, like in the vision or like uh you know, a sports game or something, right? You're right. It's it's rare. It's yeah, awesome. I, I can't I can't think of any, at least not in terms of like like you said, narratively written main characters that you play as. That you not, actually play not as, like, not in the game, right? Right, sure. So I don't know. I, I like I said, I, I'm you know, tangent aside, I I am really hoping that this game is good, just because I think it it looks like it has a lot of promise. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you. It looks cool. Let's not let's not rule it out. All right, there's a state of play that happened. It just occurred recently. My initial blurb, what I was gonna say, could this be VR two or God of War related? It turns out it definitely was not. But we did see a couple things. Jake, I don't even know if you've watched the state of play. I didn't even ask you. Have you seen this? Any of the trailers? Um, No. I didn't even know it happened. Like I said, I was out of town for work all week, so I was basically working the whole time. Well, let me tell you about it, okay? And- yeah, tell me what's up. So, I, did, I did see some of the some of the announcements, but I didn't definitely didn't see all of them. Yeah, that's fine. So the first, the fir- uh, well, we'll run through them. I don't know what order they were in, but you were talking about how Square has a has a ton of shit games, and uh, Stranger of Paradise demo is available now. It's it's a uh, Final Fantasy Origin. This game didn't do a whole lot for me from what I saw. It looked pretty cheap, pretty cheesy. There's a playable demo available now. Anyways. But what did look awesome to me, there's this game called Trek Diomi. And it is a very stylized um look like a sword play. Wait, spell that? T R E K two, like T O, and then Y O M I. It looks fucking awesome. And it looks like it's samurai shit. And it's uh, just the graphics, the way the game looks. It's like a 2D, but not 2D. Looks like there's like some story stuff that goes kind of 3D. It's weird. Looks really cool. Um, it depends on how the game plays, though, and I'm not sure. That's coming out in spring of 2022. We got a trailer for that. Did you see the trailer? Are you looking at it? I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, look that shit up, man. It's awesome. And then, of course, we got another trailer for Forspoken. But Trek to Yomi is so sweet. So it looks like a like a side scroller like samurai game. Yeah, it does look very interesting. I wish the <laughs> uh, I like see the aesthetic. I'm just looking at it, I wish that the 
I can understand why they would make the gameplay high frame rate, but to me, this seems like it should be it should be a little more sluggish. You know what I mean? Like, an old, of the, like an old samurai like movie. Like an old film. Yeah, like it. it's weird. Like the game looks like an old samurai movie, but then when you're actually what appears to be actual gameplay, <sighs> it looks very... Uh, like they like they they left the responsiveness intact if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's weird. It's got like it's it's got like these weird like limbo vibes almost with the graphics and stuff. It's pretty interesting looking. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm totally into the way this game looks. And then we we got after you know, I mentioned for spoken, we got Returnal Ascension, which was a pretty big fucking announcement. It's a free update to Returnal. It's going to include. I did a, see this. It's going to include a survival mode that's going to slowly escalate in difficulty as all survivor modes do. Typically, starts off okay. You got to kill a couple guys, and okay, now you got to kill nine hundred guys, right, and stay alive. It gets harder and harder as you go. But the other thing that looks really cool is they're offering a two-player online co-op to the game. That's really uh, to me. That's the coolest part about me it. Me too. I'm not even a big co-op person, but. That's really cool. I mean, I can see, I can see people being interested in the Tower of Sisyphus, which is like their survival thing. Mm. Looks like, um, especially because if you like, that's a if really you cool like name, Returnal. Way, if you like Returnal, then chances are you're a fucking boss at it. Like I to be to give you an example, like when I beat the game, as long as I had my loadout that I was good with. I was a fucking boss at that game. <laughs> and so like this would be a this would be a mode for those people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the ones that are like, okay, I I'm too I'm good enough to get through these six uh arcologies or or biomes or whatever the fuck you want to call them. And they're just not a challenge anymore. I want something that's just going to ramp up until I can't win anymore so I could see how far I can get. And maybe there's, I don't know if there's going to be like leaderboards or anything like that, but that would be kind of a neat touch. I agree a hundred percent. That would be awesome. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it looks, you can track your progress in the highest score on a leaderboard. Nice. I'm reading the PlayStation blog post. Um, so sorry about all the noise in the background. I think, uh, I think this is really neat. I think it's a good way to get people into Returnal that maybe don't necessarily want to buy it. Do you have to? Ha- do both people have to own a copy of the game? Do you know? I don't know. I, I think they do. Hmm. Otherwise, let's try it. I'd like to try this fucking game out. Yeah, it's it's in my opinion, Returnal is. I think it's way better than some people get it credit give it credit for. It does have some balancing issues, but it is. In my opinion, it's it was it's one of my favorite games so far on PS5 they, for sure. Is there is there uh, did they ever talk about Sisyphus in in the story of Returnal or no? Are they just using um, that as the not, DLC? Like not the, the the Tower of Sisyphus. Not really. I mean, there's no like. I mean, it sounds cool because Sisyphus was like the guy that had to push the boulder up the mountain over and over and over again. It keeps falling down. So that's yeah. like the perfect title for a survivor mode. <laughs> right. The Tower of Sisyphus. It is really neat. It's really, really smart. Really, really kind of clever. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, the TMNT Cowabunga collection was announced. I was surprised that they managed to fucking do this. This is every single 8-bit, 16-bit, and arcade TMNT game in one one package. So it's also going to include all of the Japanese variations of those games. This is awesome. On the This is Konami's doing this along with, I think, another studio. But what's awesome is, is this is coming in hot off of the excitement for the new TMNT game that has been announced that's coming out. That's like just like these old ones. So I think they're like, oh, shit, let's ride that wave a little bit. So very cool for the fans. I really liked the old school TMNT games. I had a Game Boy version of a TMNT game, and I don't know that that's included because I don't believe that would be considered a. Is I thought it? there was. I thought there was a Game Boy game. There is, but I don't think. I think. Oh, I, don't I mean, on the collection. The yeah. Oh, I don't know. I can't confirm. I don't know if it's the one that you like. 
Well, I think there's only one for Game Boy. Let me look it up. Every TMNT game in Kawabunga Collection. It's hard to type the word Kawabunga. Okay, so here. So it's. I'm going to tell you. TMNT. You got it? Arcade game. Yeah, so it's. Um, the Kawabunga Collection's arcade games, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Teenage Mutant, Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Mm-hmm. Let's tune up to three friends, have the arcade experience on your couch or online. The 8-bit TMNT 2, the arcade game, TMNT 3, project, the Manhattan Project, nice. and the 16-bit TMNT 4, Turtles in Time, mm. and the Hyperstone Heist will all have local multiplayer. Uh, Follow the Foot Clan on Game Boy. That was the one that I had. That's on there. Which one is it? Follow the Foot Clan. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the Game Boy game I had that I love so much. That was a good fucking game. There you go. And we're, we're also getting uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters on NES. The NES version, the SNES version, the Sega Mega Drive version. And then you mentioned uh, the Fall of Foot Clan. And then we're also getting two other Game Boy versions, which are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Back from the Sewers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue. Dude, I am most excited for Turtles in Time and the Manhattan Project. <sighs> Those are both fucking great games. I don't know what the price is going to be on this thing. Huh. Um, thirty? Probably not much. Probably I can't imagine 20, it might be like 30? twenty or thirty bucks, yeah, maybe. Very cool. Very cool announcement. So another announcement was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle, which is a fighting game that looks like it has a very Borderlands art style. Um, it actually looked pretty good. I don't know anything about the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure franchise, but the game looked good, and I think it it, it met a lot of uh, excitement when this was announced. Hmm. Um, the Dio Field Chronicle, which is another Square Enix project, is an RPG. It also looks kind of meh to me. Nothing really stood out about that to me. There's a Primal game called Primal. It's a reveal trailer. It's a co-op shooter from Capcom where you fight off dinosaurs where you get in mech suits and stuff. Fucking bogus, weird game. This is like the kind of game you would expect for like a double A game that would have come out on PS2 or something. It was a weird looking game. I mean, it looked fine, but it's not, it doesn't look like it's up my alley. Valkyria mm. Elysium is another RPG that was announced. It's a new edition of the Valkyria Profile series, not to be confused with the Valkyria Chronicles series. So, uh, if you're a fan of the Valkyria Profile series, Valkyria Elysium was announced. It looked actually all right. And there's a game called Gigabash, which reminded me of, like, if you took Rampage, and instead of, like, fighting... Instead of your goal to demolish buildings, your goal is to fight another monster... It looked kind of cool. Gigabash actually looked like it could be fun. I don't know anything about it, but based on what I saw, it looked like it could be fun to dick around in. Hmm. Um, And uh, we had a Ghostwire Tokyo trailer. And then lastly, the mech game Gundam Evolution. Sorry, Gundam Evolution was announced as well, if you're a Gundam fan. Um, But Gigabash looked cool, I thought. Gigabash looked real cool surprised me i didn't realize we needed like a new rampage style game though where your goal is to just go destroy cities um as a big monster that would be fun you're talking about like uh, like 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 uh um like rampage yeah yeah remember mutant blobs attack was a little bit like that no no it wasn't what was that game that uh fat princess what was that game where like you would destroy shit? You get really big. Are you talking about the Katamari Damacy? Maybe. Not Loco. I mean, Roco. Mutant Blobs was kind of like that a little bit, where you would like eat things and you would get a little bit bigger as the blob. Yeah. And then, like by the end of the game, you were from enormous. Tales from Space, Mutant Blobs Attack, you were like the size of the planet. Yeah, it was so good. That game was so good. That was uh, yeah, Drink Box, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, anyways, let's move on with some more news. Uh, so that was the state of play. It was. It was uh, fine. I saw some people tweeting like, "Man, state of play is the worst thing that happened to PlayStation." I just want to see your reveals at like game shows and stuff. But I think state of play is fine. It's fine. I just don't think they ramp up the titles very much. Like the the voiceover could use a little little excitement. Like the build. You know, it's it's like you need to have a little little character in the delivery of these games. Usually, just like. Up next, we have, you know, Gigabash, 
the next title from blah, 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 right? But if it was like some announcer that sounded like the Street Fighter voiceover, like, and it, and it echoed and shit, be like a ch- it just not have any fucking voiceover and just go from trailer to trailer. No one gives a shit about that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the trailers all tell you what game it is. Yeah. But yeah, the voiceover, I think, takes the thunder away a little bit because it seems a little lukewarm. Seems a little, a little too level. There's no hype. There's no hype on the state of play because the voice. I mean, they should just have me do it. You know, I would be good at it. <laughs> I think they just need to. I mean, there's nothing. I I honestly don't think that there's anything wrong with the state of plays. I think there. What's wrong is people's expectations of them. They're, they're comparing it to Nintendo Direct, where Nintendo does a Nintendo Direct and they do it like once a year, and it's like their fucking E3 presentation. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like Sony just like every couple of months puts out a state of play where it's like a few games that they want to highlight, maybe yeah. that they have some marketing rights for or something. And then like every maybe six months, they'll do like, a specialized state of play that's like a deep dive into one of their first parties. Like they just did one about Gran Turismo a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So like, I think the the problem with the state of play is not their existence and like the content is so much to their present, like how they're presented to the public. Like they should not be presented as like, I think it's partially Sony. Sony doesn't do anything to, to, to respond, like to fix this. Like, but People also expect too much from them, I think. Yeah. It's almost like Sony should have, like, maybe like a, to use, like, I don't know, Sony colloquialisms, have like a platinum state of play where it's Ooh. like first party titles that are like they're fucking big games for the year and it's like deep dives and shit. And then they should have, like, you know, like a, you know, a, I don't know, fucking bronze state a of play. Silver, just like, a silver like, tier. Yeah, maybe they have one that's just like, oh, indie games. And then maybe they have a tier that's like, oh, these are just a bunch of, you know, third party exclusives like the Square Enix game and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I th- and they just like throw, they, they call them all state of play so that when people are like, oh, a state of play is coming out, Sony has to like preemptively be like, oh, well, no, we're not talking about this. So, oh, we're no, not, we're not talking about that. They should just be like, they should just call them something different, like call them like a deep dive or a fucking like if a state of play colon, you know, the indie shit or state of play <laughs> colon, shit. you know, f- fucking God of War or something. You know what I mean? Because like the ones that they do that are like the one they did, uh, the state of play that they did about Ghost of Tsushima I was lukewarm on that game until I watched that state of play. And I was like, oh, this looks fucking dope. And then I, I actually bought it and I ended up really liking it. But then like I've seen these other state of plays that are like this one where it's like, okay, some of these games are probably going to be pretty good. But like, I, it's not, these aren't, this isn't like a hype thing. You know what I mean? Like these aren't games that most people are going to be hyped about. That's why you need a hype I man don't think they, talking about a voiceover. Well, I, it's the games themselves. No amount of hype man is going to help. It's just, they, they're not... <laughs> It's like a weird. It's like a no weird. amount of hype man is gonna help. That's the, it's like a it's like dude, a weird amalgamation of games though. Like think about it. That's gonna I mean, be the, the title of the show. Just so you know. What's that? No amount of hype man is gonna help. That's gonna be episode two thirteen. <laughs> it's gonna be exactly. fucking genius. I'm taking it. <laughs> but I don't know. It's it's weird. Like they 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 just need to curate these a little bit better. There's something wrong with them. They just need to be like okay. Let's give them different tiers. Mm. We can have like a bunch of these, but maybe have them, some of them be yeah. like, okay, this is specifically our quarterly update on third parties. And here is our quarterly update on indies. And then they could be like, this is the fucking, this is the primo state of play, which is about like one or two just top tier fucking games and we're doing deep dives and like, people are actually going to I like your idea it. of the trophy system like the the cuz it's already built into the gaming uh culture for Sony Sony gamers but the only issue I think that they would run into is is that they would be devaluing yeah. the lesser 
you know, the lesser games and they, they got to give everybody an equal playing field. So yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't call like the indie state of play, the like bronze, the bronze, the bronze state, state of play. Of play. It's like, no one's going to fucking it does, watch it. <laughs> it does inherently devalue them compared to like, but I like the idea whatever. though, the, the, the direction there's got to be a way to do it. So if you come up with a good idea, listeners, let us know what you think. Um, there are waves Jake being made right now. That our favorite PlayStation hero whew, might be having a new game made. And I'm not sure. Richard? Sh- no. But wow. I'm not sure if we're going to see him on PlayStation. Sly Cooper. Why would you say our favorite PlayStation hero? Yeah, because Richard is, let's be honest, Richard's our favorite. I, know, I mean, even Richard aside, I mean, Sly, I, I love Sly Cooper. But of in the pantheon of PlayStation heroes, why would you say that Sly is our favorite? Yeah, I don't know. Just, the games just, are awesome. It felt right. Yeah, you and I Wait, both. Why wouldn't it be on PlayStation? Didn't didn't that studio get bought out? Didn't wasn't the rights of Sly sold to somebody, and then Microsoft has a studio? No. Now? Yeah, for sure. I don't think so. You're talking. I think you're thinking about Crash Bandicoot. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. I've had a, I have a few drinks in me Sony. right now, listeners. I apologize. My brain's a little scrambled. <laughs> I would love a Sly Cooper game. They're fucking Sly Cooper's awesome. Yeah, but I don't know who would be making it. Yeah. I mean, because I, I think uh, who who did the last one? Suma Digital or something? Sucker Punch? Um, no, no. Who did Sucker Sly Punch, for? Dude. Someone did did remake or do uh, a Sly game that had never done one before though. Sanzaru. Sanzaru. Yes. Before. Man, I could use um, I could use a fucking Sly game, dude. It'd be fun. Be really yeah, that fun. that remastered collection that they did on PS3 was fucking awesome. We platinum them all, didn't we? Both you and I. Didn't we get platinum? I did not I did not get Sly 3, but I did platinum one and two. They were such a fun they was a it was a good run of games. Anyways, let's move forward. They're so good. We yeah. spoke briefly, Jake, about the Russia situation. Get a little serious for a second. And we all know they're invading the Ukraine right now and how it may affect and will affect gaming. PlayStation was called upon by uh, the Ukraine um, to uh, stop doing business in Russia. And as a result, PlayStation had the following tweet. And it says specifically, Sony Interactive Entertainment joins the global community in calling for peace in Ukraine. We have suspended all software and hardware shipments. The launch of Gran Turismo 7 and operations of the PlayStation Store in Russia. It's weird that they specifically... Well, I'm not done with it. Hold on. To support humanitarian aid, Sony Group Corporation announced a $2 million U.S. donation to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in the international NGO Save the Children to support the victims of this tragedy. It was a nice tweet. Go, Sony. I'm happy about it. I mean, if anyone wants to poo-poo or pee-pee on that... Um, you know, oh, only two million, or of course they're posting this now because they were asked to. You know, well, fuck it, they did it, they did it, they fucking stood up and they did it. So, anyways, that's my opinion. But I thought it was funny to me that you're reading this very serious thing. We suspended all software and hardware shipments, the launch of Gran Turismo Seven, and operations Dude, that's of the actually PlayStation a, Store. It's actually a huge fucking deal. <laughs> Gran Turismo 7. Like, I that's thought it was funny, though. What's it is kind of interesting that they call out like a specific title. That's what I'm saying. That's like, what I'm saying. Not everything else. Just the fact that they call out Gran Turismo 7. That, but like outside outside of the United States, yeah. racing is fucking huge. So like it's like FIFA, mm-hmm. how FIFA is like the best gal- selling sports game, mm-hmm. but not in America because everybody plays mad. And nobody gives a shit about FIFA. Yeah. But like globally, FIFA is the best selling sports game. Like Gran Turismo 7 is the best selling racing game in the world. Right. So, you know, it's in and there is like I believe there is a Russian team in Formula One. Oh, yeah. So it's like they've been decoded. It's pretty. No, it's kidding. pretty fucking interesting. I mean, I I. I don't have a problem with this. What I think is really wild is that they actually shut down the PlayStation store in Russia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Could you imagine how, like, how would you do that? 
Just block the IP. It's not hard. You just turn the fucking server off, my man. So here's the other thing, though. Here's what I thought what was funny is it just seemed like a redundant statement. And I'm not being nitpicky or, or, or shaming Sony. I just got a laugh out of it because it says we've suspended all software and hardware shipments. And they're saying they're uh, in operation with PlayStation Store in Russia. That means, obviously, intrinsically, that G- Grand Theft, uh, Grand Turismo 7 is included with that statement. But they say, we have suspended all software and hardware shipments. The launch of Grand Turismo 7 in operations of the PlayStation Store in Russia. Like They just wanted to fucking twist the knife a little bit. And I think that's funny to me. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I mean, maybe they. I now that you say that, it is kind of a weird statement. Maybe there, <laughs> maybe there are some kind of. It could be that there are like launch events planned or something. Yeah, that's in, possible. That's in Russia possible, yeah. that they were canceling. So what? How many um, pre-orders did they have in Russia? Is another thing, right? So what happens if you have the game pre-ordered? Do you do you still get do you still get your copy? I. That's a great question. Um, I mean, I don't fucking care. But, I mean, it is an interesting I, question. I mean, to be fair, I mean, I do care a little bit because the... The, the, the people of Russia aren't the government. Russian citizens right. that ordered Grand Turismo 7 are not invading Ukraine. It's 100%, the, the right. Russian government, right? But, like, it wouldn't surprise me if Sony was just like, here's your money back. <coughs> you know, you just don't get the game. <coughs> you know what I mean? Because... <coughs> or they could just be like, <coughs> here, you know... You will get the game. I don't know, man. That's a tough one. That's interesting. What do they do with pre-orders on the P? Because I think pre-orders on the PlayStation Store they charge you instantly. They do. So it's it doesn't. It's not like Amazon where they wait till it ships your game before they charge you. I'm gonna look it up. So it's pretty pretty wild. I mean, dude, they're doing. I mean, to be fair, Russia's doing some wild shit over there. Like like they're just nationalizing companies in Russia and like it, it just like that are owned by outside interests. It's just, it's some weird shit going on in Russia right now that is like not even including the re- the Ukraine stuff, which is obviously horrible and sad and crazy, but like as a retaliation, I guess to all the sanctions that the world is putting on Russia, mm-hmm. like Russia is just going like, they're just straight up lowering the iron curtain again, which is fucking bananas. And I feel really bad for the people of Russia because they're just going to be totally cut off from everything that we love in this industry. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree. It's, it's a very scary time we're living in and that's wild. It's just wild. But anyways, that was PlayStation's, uh, Sony rather, Sony uh, Entertainment (coughs) response um, to this whole thing. So speaking of games coming out and that have been scheduled to be released this year, Stray, that game where you play a cat in that weird world, looked really cool. It's still going to be released this year. And we know this because the game developer tweeted that they will not be featured on PlayStation's State of Purr. But they're still scheduled <laughs> to be out this year. So, I thought that was cute. Gamescom, looks Jake. Cool. Yeah, Gamescom is coming back in 2022. And it has been announced that it's going to be the largest in-person gaming expo. And it's going to go from August 24th to August 28th. And that's exciting. So, in-person, they're still taking COVID precautions seriously. <coughs> but as it stands... It's going to be the biggest one so far, The what they're saying. So, there you go. Gotham Knights has a release date of October 25th, 2022. I don't know if that's new news, but they did tweet that, so I wanted to put it in here. And then, well, I'm sure we'll talk about more about that game as we get closer to the release date. But, the one topic I wanted to discuss, and I know we're pushing an hour right now. We're already over an hour, but we needed to discuss this. So, Epic Games bought Bandcamp. And for anyone unfamiliar with what Bandcamp is, Bandcamp.com is a very uh, artist-friendly dis- distribution site for music. Now, they don't they don't put your stuff on iTunes. They're not a distributor in that sense. They don't put your stuff on uh, the streaming services. But they're kind of an all-in-one shop for independent artists and maybe not so independent artists. And the cut that they take is significantly smaller 
than most of all of the other retailers for music out there. So you can purchase MP3s. <coughs> you can, uh, if you're an artist, you can set up a, a music store to sell physical items. Set up a store to sell your digital items, and it is a thriving, a thriving website for a lot of indie bands such as ourselves. And uh, it was just really a weird crossover when I woke up to an email from Bandcamp. And they were like, well, Epic Games, uh, Bandcamp sells to Epic Games or whatever. So I'm going to go to the Bandcamp blog real quick and just read this, Jake. And then I kind of want, I kind of want your, uh, your take on this. And I'll talk a little bit about it, of course, as well. But this, this happened the week, uh, whatever week we had that podcast. So anyways, uh, the message is... I'm going to read this. It's like three quick paragraphs, and you guys can listen to this. It's just so fucking weird to me. Um, and it is, uh, the title is Bandcamp is joining Epic Games from the Bandcamp website. It says, I'm excited to announce that Bandcamp is joining Epic Games, who you may know as the makers of Fortnite and Unreal Engine, and champions for a fair and open internet. Bandcamp will keep operating as a standalone marketplace and music community, and I will continue to lead our team. The products and services you depend on aren't going anywhere. We'll continue to build Bandcamp around our artist's first revenue model, where artists net an average of 82% of every sale, and you'll still have the same control over how you offer your music. Bandcamp Fridays will continue as planned, and the daily will keep highlighting the diverse, amazing music on the site. Now, real quick, what Bandcamp Friday is, this is not written here, but I'm going to explain it real quick, is the first Friday of every month, Bandcamp takes zero cut of all sales on the first Friday of every month. And so they really encourage uh, people who have their material on Bandcamp to push it on those days and say, hey, listen, if you really want to support the artist, buy our shit on the first Friday. And they're completely like... They want the artist to do that, you know, which is kind of a cool thing, honestly. Um, yeah. So Bandcamp is, like I said, it's very artist friendly, uh, but it says how back to the article. However, behind the scenes, we're working with Epic to expand internationally and push development forward across Bandcamp from basics like our album pages, mobile apps, merch tools, payment systems and search and discovery features to newer initiatives like our vinyl pressing and live streaming services. Since our founding in 2008, we've been motivated by the pursuit of our mission, which is to help spread the healing power of music by building a community where artists thrive through the direct support of their fans. That simple idea has worked well, with payments to artists and labels closing in on $1 billion United States dollar, and while over the years we've heard from other companies who wanted us to join them, we've always felt that doing so would only be exciting if they strongly believed in our mission. We're aligned with our values and not only wanted to see Bandcamp continue, but also wanted to provide the resources to bring a lot more benefit to the artists, labels, and fans who use our site. Epic ticks all of those boxes. We share a vision of building the most open, artist-friendly ecosystem in the world. And together, we'll be able to create even more opportunities for artists to be compensated fairly for their work. That is the sentence that makes me interested in. And it says, whether you joined Bandcamp recently or have been using or have been with us since the beginning 14 years ago, thank you for being a part of the incredible community. And we look forward to serving you for many years to come. And then Ethan Diamond signs off. Uh, He's the co-founder and CEO. So that last sentence is, we share a vision of building the most open, artist-friendly ecosystem in the world. And he's talking about ecosystem. That's interesting. And together, we'll be able to create even more opportunities for artists to be compensated fairly for their work. What does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, I mean, you think about music games, right? You think about games like... uh, you know, is is it possible that that Epic somehow gets involved in music games, and then you, they're like, oh well, we own Bandcamp, so we'll give all the artists an option to make their songs available in these video games, and when people purchase them, they get a they get a. Could you imagine if like the new Guitar Hero or like a new game like this comes out, Epic runs it, runs it, and uh, anything on Bandcamp you can use as a track in the game. And it just somehow has an algorithm that pulls that music in. How cool would that be? And the artist gets a kickback. It's pretty neat. Yeah, if that's what they do. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, Jake, but my 
my curiosity is piqued because it's just ironically or coincidentally we were taught I would I went on a rant a few episodes ago about how game streaming and music streaming are very similar things and I was worried about the indie artist uh, the indie game developers you know because the kickbacks aren't very good for streaming um, but I mean, it, do you know how, how tough it is for an independent artist to have their music featured in a game? Like, it's like next, it's like impossible. Like, you have to know yeah. people, you gotta, so like, with Epic buying out Bandcamp, is it opening a window here? I don't know. Mm. Interesting. Do you have any opinions on this purchase? It's weird. It's very strange, and I don't really know, I I can't really understand why, unless it's just like an investment because Bandcamp is doing so well. Yeah. But maybe Epic is making a play for the, you know, the ability. Because think about this. It could even be something as simple as while you're like, if you're launching games through the Epic Game mm-hmm. Store, you have the ability through the Epic Game Store to like, stream games from Bandcamp while you're playing the game <laughs> or, or music from game Bandcamp. Yeah. Yeah. So like, cause like right now on a PlayStation, you can use Spotify while you're playing a game and you can like listen to whatever music you want while you're playing. And <coughs> so, you know, maybe it's something like that. I, I don't know. Like, it's interesting. It's definitely intriguing. It doesn't make a lot of sense <coughs> Excuse me. until we know what they're going to do with it. And then it may or may not make a lot more sense. Well, I'll say this. Um, there is a thing in... Now, I don't play Fortnite. But on the Fortnite wiki, it indicates that live events are events that occur within the match that connects to the storyline of Fortnite. They usually occur in the middle, near the end season. Some events involve turning off shooting so everyone can enjoy the event. Sometimes some... Sometimes build is still enabled so players can build up and gather, get a better view. So there have been scenarios, I believe, where they have had events where there were concerts in Fortnite. Um, It says Diplo hosted a major laser concert at the main stage in Party Royale. So, like, they're doing, like, weird integration of Fortnite concerts in Fortnite. Travis Scott and Fortnite present a full event. Um, Someone called Marshmallow holds the first ever Fortnite concert live. So, it's weird. There is some intrinsic uh, crossover with what they're doing in Fortnite. What is the next concert in Fortnite is a question. Epic Games has announced the next set of musical performances coming to Fortnite called the Soundwave series. Feature artists from around the world and players will be able to experience music from each artist in an interactive experience in-game. That can't be a coincidence. Hmm. I don't play Fortnite, but they're doing some weird shit over there. So, I don't know. I I want... My music in Garage Band, or uh, not Garage Band, but uh, Guitar Hero. That's all. Or in the next Thumper. Dude, it'd be awesome. That would be really neat. It'd be fucking dope. All right, so we're going a little long here. New games coming out this week, March 7th, Broken Pipe on the PS4. March 10th, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dawn of Ragnarok, Submerged, Hidden Depths. March 11th, we're getting 88 Antarctica. Speaking of Antarctica, they found Shackleton's wreckage. The Endurance ship was recently discovered. The famous explorer. Interesting. Go look it up. Little side note. Hotel Transylvania, Scary Tale Adventures. International Table Tennis. Mummy Pinball. That's right up my alley. I love pinball. Space Invasion, The Cruel King and Great Hero, and WWE 2K22. Jacob, what do you think? Good lineup of games? I don't know anything about any of these games. Fair enough. Then you love them. You love them all until you, until you have a reason not to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, dude, it's getting fucking late. It's it's it's, uh, it's Friday evening. We've got a weekend ahead of ourselves. We By the time the listeners listen to this, they're already back to work probably. But uh, And I'll be getting my windshield repaired on Monday, so send all the good vibes you can. And uh, that's all I have, Jake. Do you have anything you'd like to close out with? You want to thank anybody personally? 
if you're getting your windshield replaced anyway on Monday, you might as well just fucking smash it. Oh, dude. Would insurance cover that? <laughs> I don't know. If they come in, they're like, they expect to see a chip and like your whole fucking windshield is smashed. They they may may have a problem with dude, that. Dude, that's a really good idea but, though. Cause I could input it would be. It would be fucking cool if, like, when the when the auto glass guys show up, if you could just ask him, like, "Hey, dude, is it cool if I just fucking smash this real quick?" Can I just? Because I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, then I gotta clean up all the mess. So no. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's safety glass, so it like it like it shouldn't, barely chips or anything. Yeah, it would be but fun like, to take a bat to it, dude. I have a bat on my front door. It would be door. really neat. I bet you'd probably end up hurting yourself. It's it I, it's harder than you think to break a window in a car. Yeah. I, like especially. Especially like a windshield. Yeah. So, I mean, they 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 crack, they spider like crazy, but like it, you have to like pierce them to actually get through them. Yeah. So it's pretty wild. That is but. wild. What a neat, what a neat idea. I'm not gonna do that though. Yeah. All right. So let's end there. Let's uh, wish the listeners a good week. Hope you guys are doing all right, guys and girls. And uh, our podcast is growing slowly but surely. So thank you for tuning in to episode, what I say, 213? Is that this one? I think we're 213 at this point. Yeah, 213 of PS This Is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast. We appreciate you tuning in each and every week to our show to hear Jake and I act like fools. Um, it's been a long week at work. We happened to record on a Friday. I had a couple of drinks in me. I apologize if I said anything that was stupid that uh, you guys didn't appreciate, but I think I was pretty much spot on the entire show. Um, with the exception of that one thing I said about uh, uh, the one one game, um, uh, Sly Cooper going to Microsoft. That was a fucking mis- misstep, but I know better. I just misspoke. Um, I am going to close off the, the uh, show with a One Up My Land song, my punk band. It's an older song, but it's a goodie. It's going to be called... Uh, uh, don't ever get caught running and uh, this is off of our record Nobody Wants to Leave it's my band One of By Land you can check us out oneofbyland.bandcamp.com now owned by Epic Games but uh, you can check us out and uh, I'll put that on the end of the show we, we are in the middle of recording a new record so that hopefully will be out by the middle of summer is the game plan but we'll fucking see how that goes but yeah so that's all I got and thanks again for tuning in. I'll shut up, and you guys can uh, probably have already fast-forwarded through this closing. Jake, you got anything? You said you're good? No. I uh, Last weekend, I was riding my new motorcycle, and this weekend, it's fucking snowing. So that's cool. That's cool you got it's to ride supposed, it. It's, it's supposed to – we're supposed to get like, f- like four inches or some shit. I don't know if we'll actually get it, but they're calling for up to four inches tonight and tomorrow up. and then yeah. it's supposed to be like 50 something on monday so that's cool spring sucks up <laughs> this is also running uh, here. spring forward on s- uh, sunday morning at 2 a.m mm. so we will lose an hour of sleep which sucks because um you're already know, getting I'm up tired. at five every morning probably so I'm tired from my fucking work trip and i got another work trip this coming week so that's cool (sighs) work's kicking our Um, asses dude but uh yeah so uh sleep in an extra hour so that you're late for work on monday yeah i dare you do it open the trunk and do it do it do it do it do it do it (laughs) all right anyways starsky and hutch reference the remake owen wilson ben Stiller. all right Anyways, uh, thanks, guys. So, like Valiant Hearts, Virginia, and Video Ball. P.S. P.S. This is... This is... Awesome. Awesome.